Hi, thanks for watching my video on visible banking. Uh, today I'm spending a few moments with Mark Millen. How are you doing, Mark? I'm very well, thanks. So the new uh, chief exec of First Direct. It's yeah. been a month, I believe. Yeah, it's been a month, just over a month. This is sort of T plus a month, T plus two, I think. So something like that. Welcome back to the UK. Thank you. After a few uh, years in the Middle East, enjoying yeah. the weather. Enjoying being able to go out and enjoy the weather, rain or shine. Great. So I'm a fan of First Direct. Uh, I've been following what you've done in the last four years online, in the social media space in particular. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about that in a second. First, I'd like to read something that you said in March 2009, I believe. You tell me if I'm correct. The use of online PR and social media reflects the growing importance of the Internet, particularly in P2P, so peer-to-peer -peer recommendations, and word of mouth. Social media is a perfect medium for First Direct. Our customers are technology savvy, heavy online users, and keen to embrace new ways of communication. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that I said something like that, but it's a while back now. March 2009, so uh, two and a half years ago, which was well, it's quite It's a mastery something. statement of the obvious, though, isn't it, in all fairness? There's nothing original about it. It's, it, it seems and it looks like obvious, but again, doing that every day uh, for the last four years, I guarantee you that it's quite rare to see a, a senior exec actually thinking that way. And again, two and a half years ago. What's your vision of social media in banking? Oh, what an interesting, what a big question, actually. I'm not sure that I can answer it nice and neatly. Um, to me, at some level, or at one level, social media is merely a, a representation of a conversation that's always been happening. So, so it's interesting when you work in an organization that, that you're kind of insulated from the day-to-day -day conversation, the day-to-day -day exchange about your brand or your business. Um, it's there, but you can't see it, and you can't feel it, and you can't hear it. And that's especially true for people like me, who, who are not you know, in touch with customers each and every hour of the day that they come to work. But, but social media has basically you know, given, it, given it life, brought it together, and allowed uh, people like me to see the conversation real time, um, warts and all. So, so you know, people say good things, people say bad things, people say everything. Um, and instead of it being a, you know, a chat in the pub, clearly it's a, it's a much, much more amplified phenomenon. So, so, so you know, it's, it's strange. What's my vision of it? It's why I said it's a masterly statement to the obvious to some extent. It, you know, my vision of it, of it is irrelevant. It's, its impact upon me and its impact upon our business is what really matters. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hugely empowering to any business that wants to sit up and take notice. Um, it's hugely risky to any business that doesn't um, because of the amplification power. And that to me is the single biggest difference between the conversation 10 years ago and the conversation today. The conversation today has an amplification that we couldn't have dreamt about 10 years ago. And, and you know, it's, it's again, it's a bit of a cliche, but that allows the individual consumer to have a power and a voice that is so much bigger than their relationship with your business. And they can use that as a force for positive impact, or they can use that to be destructive, or they can use that to be neutral. Um, you know, that to me is profound. It, it is totally, actually. Uh, you mentioned something, the voice of the customer. Uh, people are talking online anyway, whether you like it or not, yeah. as you mentioned. So uh, we uh, lost uh, the battle from a banking's point of view anyway. So you might as well embrace it, yeah. We saw a lot of activities from First Direct in the last, yeah, now three, four years. Um, on the PR side of things, we've done great things, Twitter, Facebook, uh, and a few other initiatives. In terms of voice of the customer becoming involved more transparent, what do you think about um, things like reviews, so, uh, you know, like feedback, but going a step further, you know, down the road of social and transparency? and uh, for instance enabling your uh, customers and giving them the opportunity to rate your services and products? Well we're planning to do that and it's quite a, it's quite a challenging decision for us to, to allow customers to rate our products and services but again you know they're, they're doing it anyway mm -hmm. you know don't ever delude yourself that people don't have an opinion about the things that you do and that they don't share that opinion they may not do it in a nice neat structured way they may not give you a star rating because you haven't created the ability for them to do that but it's a small step for you to, to incorporate that facility onto a website and allow customers to actually rate what you do real time. Um, you know, the challenging side of it is that it doesn't always play to your favor. It doesn't always tell the story that as a, you know, a brand manager, as a CEO, or as a marketer, you really would ideally want to tell. 
Um, so to that extent, you know, the whole internet, social media, media phenomenon uh, is, a, is of itself a force for transparency. Um, you know, so, so, and you can resist it, but again, you know, kind of why? Why would anyone waste their time and energy? Um, the, the, the real difference with First Direct, I think, is that we've brought the conversation into our domain. Mm -hmm. Instead of allowing it to be a conversation that goes on around us, we've kind of said, no, 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 let's just be part of this, because we are part of it. It's just that we're not contributing to it as long as, as long as you know, we don't have skin in the game. So by bringing it into our domain and by creating the ability for customers to use our site or our domain to have the conversation, it's just acknowledging that we're quite interested in what you have to say. Um, you know, it's a risk, but frankly the rewards are so much, much higher for us. And again, it's great to hear from someone so senior in the organization, yeah. Um, no, it's great to give a platform for people to express themselves, it's one thing, especially on your own assets, so we could talk about the lab for a yeah. couple of minutes, that would be interesting. Congratulations, by the way, it's been, what, two months roughly, and more than 6,000 comments, and you launched recently a new, like, uh, ID, or to design, your help design your debit card, so I can share uh, people's perspective on that, so congratulations. Um, I mean, how complicated was it, and uh, how challenging it internally to deal with those negative comments sometimes? Well, listen, you, I don't think it's terribly difficult to deal with, with negative feedback. I, don't, I just don't think that's a particularly big problem. You don't have to do something, you don't have to respond to it. Just because somebody has an opinion about something that you're doing doesn't mean they're right. Any more than it doesn't mean I'm right, mm -hmm. right? Well, the reality of any organization is that somebody has to decide and, you know, much better to decide with the facts. So if you're going to make a decision that's going to annoy 60% of your customers who, who engage, it doesn't make your decision wrong, but at least now you know you're going to offend 60% of the people who provided you with feedback. You make an informed decision. Now. Yeah, you're making an informed decision and you're showing them some respect if you at least try to adapt or incorporate what they're telling you into what you're going to do. But like I said, it doesn't mean that you're, you're, you're going to do it. Yeah, you still get to make a choice if you sit in my chair about what you actually decide to implement. And this is a very important point. So you don't have to respond to everything, to every single comment. Um, how is it that you would communicate though to acknowledge those, for instance, negative comments? Would you try to yourself, the CEO, like I don't know, post a video to explain why you couldn't do it, for instance? Uh, could do, but but you know the other thing is that we give them airspace. It's, mm -hmm. it's not like we kind of just report on the positive feedback. We don't. We, we report all the feedback. So it's, you know, how do I give, how do I, how do I report on them? I, I, I make them visible. Mm -hmm. I give them airspace. I don't necessarily have to respond to them all and say, hey, you know what, we listened to it, but on balance we decided to ignore you. I don't, I don't think that the consumer expects to be patronized to that extent. I think the consumer expects or hopes that they've got a point of view that you're going to at least take some notice of. But I don't believe, and I've never believed, that, that anyone really believes that they have this you know, claim on being right. You have an opinion of one person, and as a consumer you may well be able to multiply that opinion 10,000 times and find 10,000 other people who share your opinion, but your opinion is just one, one person. And, and if we solicit feedback from a number of thousands of people, um, you know, sometimes it's going to accord with what we thought, mm -hmm. sometimes it's not. Yeah, We've got to make a hard choice at the end of it. The lab's a great experiment for us, um, but it's, at the, it's a really, really small step. I mean, it's a tiny step, because if you look f into the future, the challenge for the banking industry is how to crowdsource and outsource uh, value-added IT development. This idea that we're going to be building our own um, internet banking or, or IT systems in 20 years time or 10 years time or 5 years time is nonsense because you know in other industries the consumers demonstrated that they have more than enough skill and ingenuity and wisdom and genius to do a better job of that and, and, and the key challenge in banking is data security, data integrity and, and managing the trust relationship that you have with your consumer. So, so, so the lab is a tiny, tiny little step in the direction of actually leveraging the power of our customer base because they probably know better than us. But would you say that that's going to become more and more strategic to your, uh, to your approach to customer relationships? Yeah, I think what, what has been core about First Direct since, you know, since it started is 
it does more than pay lip service to the strategic value of the customer, right? And a lot of you know a lot of people will talk about being customer oriented and being customer centric and, and whatnot. But but my experience of working at First Direct, and I've, you know this is my second time to be back in that business, is the entire business revolves around the customer. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about the internet or whether you're talking about the phone or whether you're talking about email or snail mail. The entire business resolve, revolves around helping that customer. I spent, just as an example, three quarters of an hour listening to, to calls. I do that fairly regularly, or people in my, in my job do, just to sort of see what is the customer saying. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and what really struck me about the conversations our, our, our representatives were having with the customers that they were serving was that virtually every conversation was trying to help the customer make more out of the money that they already had. And as a CEO, I've got to balance that with, hey, is that always going to make us more money? Well, probably not. But at the end of the day, you know, that customer centricity is just something I can't kill and don't want to kill. It's so natural for us to do the exact same thing online that it would seem odd to do anything different. It would just, you would really, at first rate, you would have to be fairly perverse to try and make this channel mm -hmm. somehow less customer centric than the, the, the culture of the business itself. So that's a great point actually. Uh, on your lab at the moment there's lots of suggestions, right? And uh, some of the latest ones are around PFM, Personal Financial Management Tool. Yeah. Uh, what I like actually, it's, again, it's a very transparent way, which means that people can refer to competitors sometimes as well. And you leave the comments on your platform. Yeah. So that's a, a very interesting approach there, yeah? Uh, that's on your, uh, on your um, lab. <coughs> um, what do you think in terms of, uh, you've got magical conversations all the time, fun. every time I, I meet you know, uh, senior execs or uh, people from brand marketing at First Direct, you're very proud of those conversations. So in terms of content, you believe as well that you could talk to banking, but other topics. And we see that on your Facebook page, for instance. Yep. The content strategy is outside banking, it's not just properly banking. So do, do you think that's the way forward? So for a bank, uh, to talk about fashion or IT or technology, people want that, they want to connect on a more personal level? Well, I think first and foremost, people want the bank to work the way they mm -hmm. expect it to work. So permission to engage in a broader conversation with the customer is dependent upon your core competence. Are you, are, do you excel at anything? Are you very, very good at something? Is there a, an area around your brand where you've got some fame? Not notoriety, but actual fame, yeah? Um, because that, and, 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 and can you guarantee that you're gonna to continue to do that whilst you uh, expand the conversation around um, you know, other related or, or even frankly you know, quite um, sort of lateral areas. And the reason I make the point is that at no point in the journey can you excuse being bad at why the customer bought you in the first place whilst you entertain them with something they didn't actually come to, to you for. You've got to keep your eye on the ball. We're a bank, we're very proud to be a bank, we're a good bank, we look after our customers. We will hopefully always be very focused on that. Now, beyond that, do we try to engage in customer dialogue in all sorts of other areas? Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. you know, but, but we're quite careful to try and keep some, you know, some discipline around the sorts of things we discuss and why we discuss them. We're, we're quite focused on that. It's not like, you know, we come to work every day and we think we'll just we'll start something over there. Or, no, no, no. There's a strand that links the whole thing together. No, no, of course it's consistent, but <clears throat> needless to say that very few banks could do that, actually could adopt such a content strategy, not just about banking, but outside banking. But that's because they're not good enough at, their, at, at being banking. It's not because they haven't got really talented people or they haven't got, you know, great brands. Mm -hmm. It's that permission comes from excelling at the thing that the person bought from you in the first place. I will listen to you because you're good at your core competence, not because you want to take my time. Yeah, you've got to be bloody good at your core competence.